I want to welcome everyone to Ash Wednesday service here at Elida St. Paul's Church. Those of you who are present here with me and those of you who are watching online, welcome. Will you stand as you are able to join with me in the call to worship found, in, found on page 786 of your hymnal, Psalm 51. Created me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. Will you join with me in the opening prayer? O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth, you have formed us. And from the dust of the earth, you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we ask that you would use these gifts offered this evening to help those in need in this community, that they would feel your love through the help that they receive through this special offering. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, scripture today is from Romans 12, 9 to 16. Is that right? Oh, good. 2 Corinthians 5, 20, because I don't have a sermon for that one. That's, that's why I was asking. 
2 Corinthians 5, 20 uh, through uh, 6, 10. Will you uh, stand as you're able for the reading of Scripture? So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, and ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the reading of God's holy word.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early church observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there would be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. I want to invite you to come for the imposition of the ashes. As you come forward, I will make the sign of the cross on your forehead with ashes. If you do not feel comfortable coming forward, that is all right. Come. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came, and to ashes you will return. From ashes you came,
Will you pray with me? May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. It's on the sign outside, so you have no excuse whatsoever, and today begins that journey. So our first reading lesson is that very first chapter of Mark, a few verses, not a lot. We're going to look at that on Sunday, so if you read the scriptures, you'll be ahead for the sermon on Sunday, and it will be a time for us to... As the author Paul says, to fulfill that righteousness, to not let it be in vain, the forgiveness that we've received. You see, every year as we come to this service, there are a small number of people who come faithfully to this service. And for those people, it is a time of preparation, being prepared. So I don't know how many of you had uh, a punch key on Fat Tuesday. I don't know if you did that or not, but that is a tradition. Um, I, I do know, having visited Louisiana this summer, they were prepared for Mardi Gras. And there were a lot of parties in New Orleans last night. I don't know how many of those people went to church today for Ash Wednesday. I'm not exactly sure, but I hope a few of them showed up. Because if you're going to get the enjoyment out of Fat Tuesday, you should be ready to serve penance on Ash Wednesday and through 40 days of Lent. So, if you decide to give something up to fast, I encourage that. If you decide to read scripture with the church... I encourage that. I also would like to encourage you to spend some extra time in prayer. You don't have to look very far in our world to see that we are in need of prayer. This craziness that is happening in Europe and the Ukraine and the prayer that those people need. Not only the people of Ukraine, but the people of Russia the leadership of Ukraine and the leadership of Russia, that God would work in them to change their hearts. You see, that's what Lent is all about, changing people's hearts. And as Christians, sometimes, sometimes we choose who we think should have a changed heart. We choose who we think is right or wrong. See, in America, that's the new thing. I'm right, you're wrong. Or, you're right, I'm wrong. But there can be no in-between. And the reality is that somewhere in our lives, we're all wrong in one way or another. And we need to repent. We need to ask for forgiveness. 
We need to change our hearts. Even for the most faithful people, there is a desire to be more faithful. As Christians, that really is our goal. Our goal is to draw closer and closer to God. And these 40 days of Lent is a way that we can do that. So if you get into your calendar and you do some counting, you will find that there are more than 40 days between now and Easter. And the reason that is, is that you don't count Sunday. Sunday doesn't count. Sunday's a day of rest. So as you go through your Lenten devotionals, your Lenten readings, your Lenten prayers, know that those 40 days do not count on Sunday you are to rest, take a break. I want to encourage you to do that. You see, sometimes we get so enmeshed in do, 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 hurry, 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 go, go, go. But sometimes we forget to take a breath. We had a whole sermon series on that. I don't know if you remember it. Take a breath. Take a moment. Let your Sundays be that moment when you take a breath. But as we go through Lent, no matter what it is that you decide to do to change who you are as a Christian, I want to encourage you to first and foremost ask God, God, should I give this up for Lent? God, should I read this for Lent? God, should I pray this for Lent? There are a lot of different ways that you can do it. If you don't do a daily devotion and you're looking to do a daily devotion, there are a lot of different ones online. If you're not an online person, we have some right over here in the hallway, uh, upper room, or our daily bread. You can find those resources to do a daily devotional. If you're looking for scripture to read, you can read Mark along with the church. Now, this week's is pretty short. So Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I think you could read the whole thing each day. You could be really prepared for Sunday. And you could see if I mess up. Because you'll know the scripture inside and out. You'll be prepared. Your heart will be changed. But as we go through the readings and the readings get a little larger each week, you can take a little bit each day. There are some days when it's, uh, there are some weeks when it's three chapters and maybe read half of a, a chapter each day. Maybe the story is so exciting you decide to read the whole thing, but then go back and reread. When you are doing prayer, be especially vigilant in your prayer. prayer. Pray for those around you. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your church. Pray for your community. Pray for your world. And be specific. Be bold and pray for peace in Ukraine. Because I believe God can make that change. Even though it looks bleak, pray. Pray for a change in your family. Pray for a loved one who you believe needs change. And pray with your whole heart. Trust in God to make that change. And pray for these 40 days. If you will pray, if you will fast, if you will read scripture, you can't help but be changed. And if that's too much for you, start with something simple, a quick four 
word prayer. Change me, oh God. It's just that simple. Allow God to work in your life to change you. That's what Lent is all about, to grow closer to God, to grow deeper in love with God, to learn more about God. And as we celebrate Ash Wednesday, the beginning of that 40 days of Lent, ask God to change you. Will you pray with me? Lord, we give thanks that your challenge to us is change, a changed heart, a life of righteousness. In the midst of the difficulties, a change for the good. In the midst of problems, a change for the better. In the midst of despair, a change to hope. That's what we pray this Ash Wednesday. In your name, amen. In the United Methodist tradition, all are welcome at the table. Communion is available to everyone. It doesn't matter what church you belong to. It doesn't matter if you belong to a church. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, male or female. All are invited to Christ's table. Here, we do communion by intinction, which means taking a piece of bread and dipping it into the cup. Or, if you would like contactless communion, there are communion cups at the entrance. They have the juice and the wafer in them. At the point when people are coming forward, you are free to take communion from the cup and to take the wafer at that time. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, we ask your presence here this night that you would make for us this bread your body and this cup your blood that frees us from sin. Lord, help us. Help us to put aside our doubts, our fears. Help us to accept your forgiveness, to free us, to be your children. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. (coughs) On the night he was betrayed, Christ took the bread. He broke it. He passed it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup. He blessed the cup, and he passed it to his disciples, and he said, Take, drink. This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat and drink, do this in remembrance of me. We come tonight to remember that act of forgiveness through the life and death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I have, um, Tracy, can you come forward and help me serve communion? The table's prepared.
I'm going to ask you to come from down this aisle and return down that aisle. Come, the table's prepared. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for the forgiveness that is found in you. Create in us a clean heart and send us forth to share your love. Forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.
Go forth from this place and allow God to change you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.